Well, good day, everyone. Welcome once again to your daily dose of English. Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk about、uh, the expression, an expression of the day, the phrase, a verb of the day, business vocabulary、uh, of the day, and some tips about you know listening, reading, and stuff like that. So, let's not waste any time and get right to it. Well, the expression of the day today is the expression "go back to the drawing board." Go back to the drawing board. So, the expression "to go back to the drawing board" basically means to start again. It's it means to start from the beginning, to start from scratch, right? So, we could、uh, say, for example. This is not a good project. We have to go back to the drawing board. It means we have to start all over again. Say I'm, um, I'm, um, you know, we're working on a on a problem, and、um, we have to start again because everything is wrong. We could say, guys, okay, we have to go back to the drawing board. It means we have to go back to the beginning. Okay. Uh, it's a very common American expression, and、uh, it's commonly used. You can use these two expressions、uh, actually, right? You can say "go back to the drawing board," and you can actually say、uh, "start from scratch." So you could say we have to start from scratch. Start from scratch means start from zero, right? Start from、uh, zero moment in time. So restart, start again, which is the same idea of go back to the drawing board. For the phrase of verb of the day, we have the phrase of verb ask after, ask after. The phrase of verb、uh, ask after is an interesting for phrase of verb. It means to ask someone about someone else. Like, think about this for a minute.、Uh, you have a son. Or your parents, right?、Uh, and I meet you, and I say, "How are your parents? Are your parents okay? Are they doing well?" So I'm asking you about somebody else. So I am asking after your parents. You see what I mean?、Uh, my mother is always asking after you, right? So think about this. You and I are talking. And my mother is always asking me about you, so I can say, "Hey, you know what? My mom is always asking after you, right?" So asking after is to ask questions about somebody else.、Uh, you can use that in a business setting. For example,、uh, we're at the office,、uh, and then you go to the restroom, right? You go to the restroom, or you go to a meeting, whatever it is. So our our boss or manager comes to me and says,、uh, "Where's Where's Jack?" And I could say,、um, "Well, I don't I don't know where Jack is, right?" And then he said, "Oh, okay." So then when you come back, I could say, "You know what? The boss was asking after you. He was asking after you. He was asking questions about you. He was looking for you." So you can also use in that context. Okay, keep that in mind. For the business vocabulary today, we have a word that is a very interesting word, but a lot of people don't know. It is the word invoice. Basically, what is an invoice? An invoice is a list of goods, a list of products or, or services with their values. It's a bill. Right, it's a bill of goods.、Uh, now, in Brazil, people often use、um, invoices as nota fiscal, and that's not quite correct because nota fiscal is a different thing. Right, it's a fiscal document. It's a it's a tax document. It's an official tax document. The invoice or the bill of goods or the bill of sale. Or the receipt of a product is not exactly the same thing of a nota fiscal in the U.S. The concept of nota fiscal, as it exists in Brazil, doesn't exist in the U.S. So in the U.S., they usually use invoice 
for things you have to pay, right? So, for example, if I get, um, you know, a barcode that I have to pay, normally they would use that term as invoice. So you say, I got an invoice, right? I have to pay that invoice. So it's usually something that needs to be paid, right? A receipt is when you pay something and you get a receipt. So I paid for my, um, you know, um, sandwich or using my credit card and and then I get a receipt. That is a little different from that. And then you can also have a bill of goods or or a bill of sale. A bill of goods and a bill of sale, it's usually a description of what is in the box of what you bought. So usually the bill of sale or bill of good comes with the package with a description of everything. Now, having said that, sometimes they use the word invoice for that as well. So, oh, Marcelo, that's very confusing. Yes, yes, it is a little. But what I recommend you to go is like this. Invoice, something you have to pay. That's better. Right? Invoice is something you have to pay. You got a barcode. And it's a a value that is due and you have to pay. Receipt. Well, you paid something and you got a receipt. And uh, if you get a box, if you get a package delivery from Amazon or whatever, usually in that package you have a list, a bill of goods or a bill of services. Right? And uh, that could also be done for transporting material. If you're transporting material from one part of the city to another part of the city, you can also use that list of, uh, you know, bill of goods or bill of services. Okay. I hope you got the idea. I know it was a little confusing, but that is sort of the way it goes. All right. Now, um, to end our uh, podcast today, our daily dose of English today. I want to talk to you briefly about the uh, Matrix for the Matrix Resurrections uh, movie. Uh, it 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 uh, opened, um, I think, December twenty second on HBO Max. So if you have HBO Max, uh, it opened uh, December twenty second. You can watch it, and it's all in the movie theaters as well. Uh, having been a, a big, very big Matrix fan as I, as I am, I have watched the movie, and um, ooh, where do I begin? It's it's not for me, right? For me, it's not a Matrix movie. For me, it's a complete different idea from the Matrix movies, right? So if you like. Uh, Matrix 1, and even Reloaded, if you like the two, right, Matrix Reloaded, you probably will not like Resurrections because it's, the idea is, is is really weird, right? I mean, the the, the proposal um, is is different, right? I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to spoil the movie. Uh, You have to watch it for yourself to see it. But it's very strange. It's a very meta movie, right? It's a very, it makes a lot of references to itself. And I thought it was very weird, right? Very weird. There is nothing new, like um, the, 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 the fight scenes and the technology and the you know, visual effects. There is absolutely nothing new. Uh, that would that would say, wow, that's awesome, that's different. No, nothing new. The script is, to me, the story is not interesting. That's my personal opinion. Other people might enjoy it, but I didn't like it. So that's what I have to say. I put in a reading. There's a link there if you want to read an article about uh, why this Matrix movie was made. Uh, Maybe this link explains why they decided to go ahead and make that movie now. And there's also in the listening section, I put out the uh, trailer for the Matrix 4 movie. 
So if you like The Matrix and you want to watch the movie, the trailer, you can watch the trailer right there. Uh, and then, you know, you decide for yourself if you want to see it or not. As I said, I watched it. I didn't like it. Um, I, re- I, I, I tell people, like, if you're a fan of The Matrix, you should watch it. Even though it's not great, you should watch it because then you can make up your own mind. Anyway, this is it for today. I know it's been a long podcast, but um, I just uh, wanted to talk to you about The Matrix. I couldn't waste the opportunity. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you soon, right?